In this segment, I want to introduce uh, radio scanners. It's a little fun little hobby, and that's just about it. It's just a hobby. Um, unlike computers or cars, you're going to spend a bit of money on, on a radio scanner, and it's not going to turn the kind of profit you could get with a computer, because with a computer, you, maybe you can do some kind of coding or repair work, same with a car. Don't, don't watch this segment and go, oh my god, I can intercept all radio all around me. I have to get the most expensive radio scanner. Don't, don't do that. A lot of times if you want to go and buy a radio scanner, some of the features to look for will, will vary between different models, and I'll explain these three in front of me in a moment. Um, you can actually go and buy them used. A lot of the scanner guys and amateur radio guys, will uh, they take very good care of their equipment. So this scanner right here, which is a very modern Radio Shack Pro 95 dual trunking scanner, um, with 1000, 1000 channel memory and computer interface as well as programmable search functions and uh, like I said dual trunking capabilities would probably run you about two hundred dollars retail you could probably get it used for about a hundred this is a Radio Shack uh, Pro 63 scanner it, um, the frequency coverage is in is great this actually covers between 29 megahertz all the way up to 1.3 gigahertz with some gaps in the frequency bands which I'll explain in a moment this is a Radio Shack Pro 63. It can go up, go from uh, 29 to 512 megahertz, of course. Again, with gaps in the um, in the frequency bands. And this is a Bearcat BC700A. Uh, this says it goes up to 800 megahertz, but it actually goes up to something like 912 or 915. Um, now, the the real main differences between all of these scanners is their functionality and their frequency range. Now. Having a scanner in your car, this is supposed to be a mobile scanner, having a scanner in your car here in the United States, in most states, is actually a crime without, an, uh, without a radio license. If you actually have a receiving device that can pick up uh, police, fire, EMS, and emergency frequencies in your vehicle and you're caught with it, it, it could be a night in jail, possibly fines, possibly jail time, so you've been warned on that one. Um, if you do have an FCC radio license, though, you can go and carry whatever the hell you want on you, whatever the hell you want on you. Now, this is an older scanner. Um, we, have, there's a, we got some called frequency bands. A frequency band is basically allocations of frequencies designed for specific services. An example, I know CB radio is between 29 and 30 megahertz. Um, six meter ham radio is 50 megahertz to 54 megahertz. Um, uh, remote controls for the garage door openers, security systems, and things of the such are 300, uh, 310 megahertz. Um, Older cordless phones are 40, uh, 45 to 49 megahertz. 900 megahertz phones, the, ba uh, the handset is 900 to 915, and the base is 915 to 925. I know pagers reside in the 800 megahertz range and the 512 megahertz range, as well as above 925 megahertz. Um, I know trunking, there's trunking data um, along the lines of 470 to 400, and I do believe 75 or 78, uh, uh, 480 megahertz. Frequency band, I'm basically, it's just, um, an allocation plan of what frequency is supposed to do what services. Um, anyone into amateur radio will already know this. This is something if you plan on getting into amateur radio, you're going to have to learn. I'll put some more, more information in the show notes. I've, covered, I've already spent too much time on this. But anyway, some of the fun, fun things you can do with a radio scanner besides just receive radios, you can also receive data, which I'll leave for a future segment. Now, this scanner, because it's older, it has um, lower frequency coverage. Um, like I said, it goes up to about 512 megahertz. Now, there are certain frequencies that are deemed unadmissible for interception. So, like things like uh, in the 830 megahertz uh, frequency band, there was the old pager data, not old pager, old cell phone for the amp system, where if you were to intercept that and decode that data, you can clone cell phones. So they've actually blocked out certain frequencies. This sports itself as an 800 megahertz scanner to try to get people that are trying to do cell phone cloning to buy it. However, it's been locked out. In this, it's, uh, certain frequencies have been locked out, like 310 megahertz. It's supposed to be a security frequency, so you're not allowed to intercept it. Same goes for this one. This, this does, in fact, pick up 800, uh, 800 megahertz and 310. Now, the difference between the three of these is this one here and this one here you can unlock those restricted frequencies by doing a small hardware modification usually by removing or switching around diodes or or resistors this scanner is all software and firmware controlled, where you can actually use buffer overflows to um, unlock certain frequencies unfortunately the people that created these buffer overflows do not give information on how to unlock frequencies that could be used in a criminal intent like the um, cord uh, like uh, cell phones okay so 
Another difference is what we call the stepping. The stepping is basically the spacing between your frequency. So, example, let's say you have 1 megahertz and 2 megahertz, and you have a 1 kilohertz, uh, one kilohertz uh, stepping. That means you'll have a thousand different kilohertz you can go in, like the increment that you can go through the frequencies. You have three common increments. You have um, 5, 6.5, and 12. Now, these two scanners can actually pick up 900 megahertz phones in the 900 megahertz range. The thing is, this uses a 6, a six kilohertz stepping. This uses a 12 kilohertz stepping. So this is more precise in receiving on the, uh, the 900 megahertz band. Now, this has actually been programmed to use most, the most common stepping on, on the frequencies. So if you're on a lower frequency, like the, um, uh, let's say like an amateur radio band, maybe you'll have a 5 kilohertz spacing, but if you're on a, on um, let's say a paging frequency, you might have a 12 kilohertz spacing. So this is actually hard coded, and you can, using some non-proprietary software, which Radio Shack does not want you using, it will void your warranty. You can actually program this scanner to go and scan ranges of frequencies. It's not intended. It's hard coded into this, and it's hard coded into this, which means if you mod do a physical modification to two of the these two radios, you might actually break some of its other functionality. Another thing you have to understand when it comes to radio scanners is just with any radio, you have to have the appropriate antenna. I've already explained some antenna design about how your your frequency will determine the wavelength, and the wavelength is is uh, directly proportional towards the size of your antenna. I'll put some links in the show notes about designing antenna. You also have to understand proper coax. These are not transmitters. They do not need to have 50 ohm coax. You can use 75 ohm coax, meaning when the cable or satellite guy came by and installed your TV in your satellite box and he left some cable behind, you can use that exact 75 ohm cable to run an external antenna from your, from your scanner to an external antenna. You know what? That's enough lecture. This is going to be, a, I'm trying to keep this a short segment, so I'll give you an example. This is my 900 megahertz cordless phone. Okay, Radio Shack brand model, no thrills, no frills. Radio Shack scanner. I'm going to turn my scanner on and I'm going to tell it to scan the frequencies from 900 to 925 and see when I can pick up this phone. So I'm going to turn the phone on. See, little red light. It's on. Scanner on. You probably can't see that, so I'm not going to bother. Okay, search. While it's searching, I'll explain something called. Okay, that's not my phone. That's my phone. Oh, wait, here we go. There you go, found the frequency. Okay, I forgot to, it could explain squelch. Squelch, basically squelch is a, an internal filter by that discerns static from signal. So when you're using a radio scanner, what, what the best thing to do is if you have a very strong signal, turn your squelch all the way up. If you have a low squel a signal, turn it all the way down just before your, your, your scanner goes to static. That way you can pick up that low signal. Okay, that's it for that. Now, um, you can actually use, um, if you're regulated by the FCC, or the Federal Communication Commissions, whatever the hell it is, um, you can actually go to their, their website and go into their database and search their database. If you know the name of an organization, company, business, what the hell ever, that uses, a said free, uh, uses any kind of frequency, you want to know that frequency. Like, let's say you have um, a car service, or around here, the local 2600 uh, people meet up at a, at a, at a building called the, the Citigroup building. I know where the lo I know the location of the building, and I know the name of the building. And just using those two query search terms, I'll show you how you can go and find the frequencies that the people in that building use. I'm going to show you how to go and find frequencies of known locations using the FCC or the Federal Communications Commission. If you're in the United States, you will be regulated by the FCC. If you're outside of the United States, just skip this part. Go to the F go to FCC.gov, and on the right hand side, in the middle, you'll see bureaus and offices. Go to wireless telecommunications. Okay, the Wireless Telecommunications Bureau, or the WTB, has an online database which you can search different queries. Now, they have general menu reports, which we don't care about. What we want to know is the universal licensing system because everyone, like every business, every amateur radio operator, 
all of them have to have a license and that license can be searched and they could be found in this case we're gonna find out what organization what company what business owns a frequency now we don't know the call sign but we do know the name okay we're gonna go to an advanced search now I know the local 2600 groups meet up in a place called the city uh, the city group bank or the city group building here in the city so we don't know the call sign we don't know the service group but we do know that it's C I T I G R O U P city group we don't know the FRN uh, we know the city is New York and the state New York don't know the zip code everything else to leave is default license detail all of them authorization types all of them frequencies all of them and then just click your search now it's gonna come up with some information now here's our call sign like I said every single licensed operator or control point meaning radio needs to have a call sign and a lease 